disparities in the system, educational system uh, with uh, Ukraine, but also we have uh, similar challenges in uh, maybe uh, in a chronological distance, yes? We had such uh, challenges 10 years ago, for example, and some of them we have now. So political demands are also uh, very close. And I'd like to say that your CLEO mission was really successful because of uh, several reasons. First reason, we met a really uh, eager of uh, professional and uh, uh, maybe state level, political, high political level of uh, Kyrgyzstan society to change history education. They understand that they need to change uh, their uh, national narrative. They should do something. Also, we had a possibility to meet with the European level, uh, international level and international organization uh, represented uh, democracy idea in Kyrgyzstan, democracy policy in Kyrgyzstan. So we also convinced them that EuroCLEO is a powerful, powerful organization not only for Europe but for the world. And the idea and methodology of EuroCLEO is really um, effective for dealing with these challenges in Kyrgyzstan. The learning section has tried to develop activities to go with content, particularly with the World War I module, which is what the funding was directed to. Online you will find developing activities looking at aspects of historical thinking, such as cause and consequence, change and continuity, historical interpretation. I refer you to historiana.eu learning and you'll find some of those there, including definitions of teaching challenges, um, historical thinking, etc. Thank you, perfect. <laughs> and, and so last but not least, these two things are very important to me, uh, that we continue to be very, very visible. I think too visible that it's good for us sometimes because it generates a lot of interest and more interest generates more work, and more work generates more overwork, and more ambition, and more ideas, and it's tricky to manage that. Uh, but one of the reasons that we are able to manage that was, I'm sorry to say very briefly, uh, how that experience was over the 2014. Yeah, so I retired, and I really retired. I mean, especially advice that means that they can ask me questions, I do not interfere with that. But what happens, of course, is that I got quite some invitations to speak, to uh, meet panels, and so on, which are really related to Euroclear, but I always ask them first if I should go or that somebody else should go there. And the other thing, and I think that is really what I'm doing very much, is sitting in international boards, trying to connect the work of Euroclear very much with the work on the digitization in Europe via uh, Europeana, where you could follow me making quite a steep career in the last uh, year, and I ended up being lately vice president of the Europeana board, so a really steep career, and the other story is that I'm very active for education, and you can see I Twitter about that and, and try to work on that in uh, Brussels via the platform for lifelong learning, and I constantly try to defend that education is more than work and looking for opportunities to put citizenship more on the agenda. Look, if you haven't seen that book, and if you don't get to it during the coffee break, it's also on our website available in eight languages because it's a very rich region. <laughs> it's sold out, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have any copies left. So that's some of the highlights for 2014. Again, all the details are in the report. If you have any question, then feel free. And I'll just <coughs> wrap this up as well. OK, so last year, <coughs> we uh, reintroduced, in a way, discussion groups to get from members at the end of the General Assembly some inputs. What would your ideas be for what we should do? Uh, you gave us a lot of ideas. Some of them very concrete, some of them very ambitious, some of them very generic. We just distilled from that what are the key recommendations that we saw, we from Secretariat, and discussed it with board, and how did we follow up on them. Um, so the group on member cooperation discussed a lot of things about members being able to contact each other better, and uh, mentioned contact sheets, and keep an overview of lists, and basically what we 
took out of that is that at Eurocleo, in our server, is 23, 24, maybe even more years of lots and lots of data. So b before just making these small steps yourself, let's have a new initiative where we can systematically collect, organize, and share all that information that we have. And we hope that we'll come back in the action plan that in the rest of this year we can go back to you and show you how does that look online and what is missing. So that's basically, we call it International History Network. Get all the data about organizations, networks, projects, curricula up on our website. The Group of Education Innovation spoke a lot about a lot of things connected to, let's say, active learning and multi-perspectivity. Uh, and, and a lot of areas that you actually find back in our manifesto and are leading the way we decide what actions to take. The key recommendation was, was to work with teacher trainers and teacher training institutes and to strengthen the links between research and practice. So, in a way, we follow that up by put, putting this into the mainstream of how we apply for projects. So, when we apply for projects now, we look for this kind of multi stakeholdership. So, it's not just the level of history teachers associations, but also the level of the researcher and perhaps also the students. More information about that, you can obviously come and ask me whenever you want. And the final one, which was the most, the one with the wildest idea, is you should go to China, you should do something in the South China Sea, and what about uh, Argentina, whatever, was to go global. Obviously, I like that, that you may have uh, know, but basically we are more and more in concrete partnerships and real discussions with partners, whether they are intergovernmental or non-governmental, in North and South America, in Central, in, in Southern, Central, and Northeast Asia. And you will see later on in the presentation about the future, what kind of activities would come from that. So this was just the feedback about what you have discussed in 2014 and how we picked that up in that market. The next one we would like to uh, update you on, sorry I'm uh, interfering with you, <laughs> is another of the aspects that I mentioned earlier being 2014, a year of innovation. One of the innovations we have uh, promoted is that we changed the system within the board of the so-called officers for certain tasks, such as the membership officer or finance officer or whatever, we are more into teamwork, to be very honest, so we install committees. Uh, the committees, as you can see, cover both members of the board and members from the secretariat staff, so that we have mixed groups in a way, so that the work can be, you know, tackled from different sides, so to speak. You see the three committees here on the screen, as I understand. Yes, that's right. <laughs> And you can see the board members who are in the committees. You can also see that some board members are in several committees. So this is what we found most sensible to um, uh, facilitate the work being done in the board. This is the amount of hours spent in the secretariat divided over what we call the areas of work. You can see what are the areas of work, but the most important thing for me also again in 2014 is that within the programs, where we develop educational tools and provide teacher training, the majority of the hours are there. You know, and operational is still a, a small slice, relatively. Uh, within that program, so this gives you a general idea where most of the hours then in the end end up. That's of course because we have projects or with one program and no projects with the other. So Mediterranean Dialogues doesn't have a project at the moment, whereas Historiana is running on four projects. So that way you see uh, where uh, we work in the smallest one is this new idea with a more uh, uh, creating online network. Now we're going to switch a bit to the foundation. And since you are history teachers, maybe a bit of history. I think uh, if we go back, we see a lot of transformation and also a lot of shifts in regulations. The foundation has been started in uh, 1992, already uh, 22, 20 years ago. And by that time, there was a kind of twinning between the association and the foundation. Most of the activities were done via the foundation, and a part of the activities were done via the association. Then in 2006, 
uh, shifts came up. The EU regulations uh, were uh, more uh, strictly, and uh, that means that uh, we had, uh, well, the band was going to the association. Uh, as already explained uh, in the past, there was no possibility to build up operational reserves within the association. Uh, but there was also, we thought, a kind of need for a new democratic uh, system and new effective governance. So we were uh, trying to think about to change uh, the, uh, the governance. That uh, lasted until 2010. By that time, the legal restructuring came up, and from that moment on, all the activities, almost all the activities, were done via the association. Um, the, sec the secretaries were transferred to the uh, uh, association, projects were transferred, and we, we tried to build up a kind of sustainable governance by that time. Uh, the purpose for the foundation then, in this new setting, was mainly two things. One, to have a kind of uh, extra financial buffer because of the, the lacking of the uh, uh, operational uh, reserve in the association, and also to be a kind of vehicle for new partnerships and for uh, donations. That lasted until, let's say, last year, uh, and then uh, the EU, sometimes that happens, uh, seems to be less strict than before, so they changed their policy with regard to the operational grant. It's now allowed to, for the association to build up its own operational grant. So that uh, already uh, was, was, let's say, a, a reason to change again, and we decided uh, to have all the partnerships and the donations to, uh, to the association, where we see the association as, let's say, the uh, vehicle to the outside world. We do, we do not think it's, it's wise to have two kinds of vehicles, one uh, doing a lot of things and some uh, other things done by the foundation. So we will uh, really try to concentrate all the work, but also the, outs uh, the outside uh, view to the, uh, to the association. Um, and that means that we have to reconsider the policy with regard to the operational reserve. Uh, I will show you in the next slide that within the foundation there's still a reserve of about 20,000 euro. Uh, the association now has its first reserve of 30,000 euro, and we have to reconsider how much we want to uh, have as an operational reserve in the, in the, in the, in the future, uh, and where that will be, so to speak. Approval of the financial report. I would like to ask you um, um, if you approve of the finances as they were explained uh, just before by the treasurer. Um, Will you please raise your hand if you approve of the financial report? The conference is about different roads to democracy, and now this is the road to our own democracy. So I try to find out whether or not this road, this road will really work. Uh, voting for today will be uh, with regard to the voting committee. I will come back to that a little bit later. We have a re-election of one member of the audit committee. We also have a re-election of one member of the board. The board sorry. We do have an election for a new board member, and then we have a voting for you for your uh, member of organization, as one candidate for being the new member. Um, just to explain briefly the voting procedures, they have not changed, but just that you know how they are. Uh, only full members uh, who have an official delegate present have voting rights in this General Assembly, and they're based on the, the size of the, uh, the association they are representing. Um, only those associations who, who did pay uh, really have uh, voting rights, some of them uh, did pay during the conference, others of course have done that before, so we really checked that uh, very carefully. Uh, we have the discretionary authority to dispensate membership fees and to reduce the corresponding number of votes, if there is any need for that. Um, we, uh, that's what I just said I think, um, we have checked the fulfillment of the payments uh, for 2014, and we uh, also discussed this, as the audit committee already explained, uh, with, uh, with them in, uh, in more detail. My name is Rita Mikko, I come from Finland, and I am an ordinary history teacher. I teach in a lower secondary school and, and I have been also active in our association in Finland. I've been the chairman of the board. Right now I'm the vice chairman. And we have done cooperation with Nordic teachers and Baltic teachers. And then also we have had cooperation with Lebanese teachers. 
And what I think about myself about Europe, Leo, I think that it's a, I want to combine things. I think I want to have things that it's not only professional but also personal. I think this is a great place to meet people. So that's why I want to have like things together, body and soul, work and fun. And I think this is a great place to to have these both things. And for board, I think there should be people, different kind of people, and also people from the south and people from the west. And as Finland, you know, it's very northern country. It's it used to be during the Cold War. It wanted to be in the west, but it was quite close to the Russia as well. So I think uh, I have the I might have the possibility to understand the other, like the eastern part of Europe as well. And as some of you know, I also speak Russian. So, я думаю, что вот это хорошее дело, чтобы вот это у нас были тоже такие члены, которые на русском могут говорить. So, so if you think these things are important. So please, vote me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rika. So after having the presentation of the two candidates, uh, it's now time for the, uh, the voting paper. She is the same. <laughs> <laughs>